Before Archimedes' principle, no one knew about buoyant force or the weight displacement that occurs in the water on which objects float. Before Newton discovered the law of universal attraction, no one could have imagined gravitational attraction or the force that acts on falling objects. While a feat of ingenuity at the time, Roman society depended on aqueducts because Stevens' law and the principle of communicating vessels didn't yet exist. And that principle wasn't discovered because of the prevailing mentality that water couldn't advance uphill. Indeed, none of these laws would be here today if their theorists had insisted on maintaining the status quo. Consider our society, obsessed with constant technological improvement and advancement. We have more information at our disposal, more methods of experimentation than ever before, yet some aspects of our everyday lives we simply continue to accept as they are. Shouldn't the drive we feel for convenience and constant improvement of our data capabilities, social devices, and service ranges be reflected in all fields of production and study? Have you heard of the principle of avoiding condensation? You may be asking yourself why a helpful natural process that brings us rain and maintains healthy ecosystems should be avoided, but we've all suffered from condensation in some way. Be it in the form of mold, decaying walls, or even just humidity on all too hot summer days, condensation may be helpful to our environment, but it's a nuisance to our architecture. The principle of avoiding condensation hasn't yet been applied in practice because of the overwhelming assumption that in an enclosure, specifically a building enclosure, vapors trapped inside must escape outside in a controlled way. Condensation occurs in the first place due to temperature differences between the inside and outside of an enclosure. The very point of walls, which is to protect what they enclose from the elements, causes them to become the dew point for moisture in the air. Similarly to how different storm fronts meeting can cause a tornado, the dew point occurs when moisture in the air meets a temperature that causes it to revert to water. If that point occurs in walls where the water has no place to escape, then even when there are no extreme temperatures occurring inside or outside, the concealed moisture that was forced into the walls continues to wreak havoc on the enclosure structure. Concealed condensation leads to mold, which can cause a host of illnesses not limited to allergies, eye and skin irritation, respiratory trouble, fatigue, and even joint irritation to the building's unlucky occupants. It also considerably reduces the building's lifespan and can lead to collapse if not dealt with timely. The principle of avoiding condensation says no, never again. And as with most things in life, prevention is the best cure. The enunciation of the principle is, when differences of temperature exist and an enclosure is interposed between the interior higher temperature and the exterior lower temperature, or vice versa, to avoid condensation, the heat flow has to convert the cold flow, deficit of heat, in an insulation material or assembly without vapor diffusion or any air vapor flow that transports warm vapor towards cold zones. Note that walls and insulation must be considered separately. Walls are structural while insulation is considered an environmental separator. It's this idea to which the principle refers. The insulation should be resistant to vapor pressure. And extreme differential vapor pressure is equivalent to inflating a balloon. A balloon cannot be made out of air vapor permeable materials like wood, plywood, or mineral, wool, or separate insulation boards, or it won't hold its shape. Let's break down the theory a little bit so the concept of prevention can be grasped. Without differences of temperature, no vapors move from the hot and cold environments. The enclosure is created by an insulation that takes different temperature loads from the contrasting environments. Environments can be changed at any time without affecting the principle of avoiding condensation function as the environmental separator created does not depend on climate and seasons. There are two heat energy flows that convert one another inside the insulation starting with the temperature of the interior surface versus the temperature of the exterior surface. Vapors, as we know, heat and cool with the interior and exterior temperatures, and they also diffuse through insulation materials, from in to out when it's cold outside, and from out to in when it's hot. 
In the case of the principle, the dew point of exchanging temperature is inside the insulation material and, as it is designed to be vapor impermeable, it stops vapors from passing through. When vapors cannot get to the dew point area inside the insulation material, condensation is avoided. Note that instead of using common vapor barriers that control the flow of moisture in wall assemblies, this method prevents moisture from dispersing through the insulation, eliminating the dew point entirely. Because the surface in contact with the vapors is no longer a condensation plane, condensation is completely prevented. A different enunciation of the principle according to material properties is, the condensation is avoided when the heat flow converts the cold flow in a vapor impermeable insulation or a non-permissive insulation assembly. The PAC is applicable in any case where condensation is a detriment, particularly in construction. Say we extend the insulation discussed to create an enclosure in the form of a house. Add an interior wood frame structure, first floor, and mansard. The non-permissive environmental separator should also be placed under the roof system to complete the enclosure. The only interaction with the exterior is the thermal flow conversion inside the vapor impermeable insulation. Non-permissive insulation is a complete vapor barrier and thermal retardant that acts as an environmental separator which solves the moisture issues in construction. In addition, envelope walls, the structure are not affected by the exterior environment and behave like interior walls. Non-permissive insulation can be attached to any wall structure, even the interior, without it being affected by condensation. Wherever it's applied, the structural element of the wall will have consistent temperatures with the environment in which it is contained. This is very unlike other claddings, curtain walls, and roof systems which need to be ventilated from inside to outside by airflow. It's time we take this theory, this principle of avoiding condensation, and make it a construction law. Because in a world of constantly advancing efficiency and convenience, we can't let the buildings that give us a shelter or workplace, the stores that house our goods, fall by the wayside.